Hello, everyone. I'm Yuki Washington. Hi, everybody. I'm Jessica Dean, and this is the 12th annual Alex Scott a Stand for Hope Telethon. If you're just getting yeah. home from work, if you're just checking in, the energy is up because this is our power hour. It's the last hour of the telethon. We've been going on since 6 a.m., yes, and we're ready to close it big. Let's do it. You know the number is 844-977-CBS3. That's 844-977-2273. We would love to hear from you now. As Jess said, this is our hour of power, and you have the power to change a child's life and their family. That's right, and we are all here because of the little girl who looks right there on to us tonight. That's Alex Scott. It was her dream that no other child would ever have to deal with childhood cancer like she did. And she set out to make that dream a reality by selling a couple lemonade at a time. And boy, has she left a legacy. She certainly has. Let's share that with you right now. Alex Scott, the little girl with a big dream. A legacy unmatched, an idea that became a movement, an idea that's now changing lives, saving lives. Alex Scott wanted to sell lemonade, raising money for doctors treating boys and girls like her, kids with cancer. A front yard stand selling lemonade for 50 cents a cup, selling hope, priceless. Alex Scott was a girl with purpose, wise beyond her years, and perhaps in here with one goal, turning hope into reality. This is Alex's story. Alex was incredibly strong. I mean, I think since day one. I mean, she was born, you know, five, six weeks early and went home the next day. Uh, she had quite a cry. <laughs> A cry that let you know she was a force to be reckoned with. Strong-willed and strong-hearted. Some might call her relentless. I think that that resolve and that determination, it served her well, but it, but it became such an important part of her life because she had to fight for so long. And she, she had to be strong. Her life required her to be strong in a way that none of us probably could even imagine. Strong is an understatement. But the little girl who entered life like a freight train would be stopped in her tracks. Liz and Jay Scott knew something was wrong with their little girl, who wasn't even a year old. They took Alex to the doctor week after week. The diagnosis? She was just a cranky baby. But the Scotts knew better, and a mother's intuition pushed her to get answers. We thought something was wrong with her for, for three months. Finally, one Sunday, I came home from work and she was miserable. Liz said, something's not right. I'd given her as much Tylenol as the doctor said I could give her and she's still not feeling well. After a long ride to the hospital, they had to convince doctors to admit Alex. We got there and they said, well, what's wrong? And we said, we don't know what's wrong, but something's wrong with her. And they said, you know, we can't really admit a kid based upon that. They eventually admitted Alex and the next day would prove to be terrifying as doctors sent Alex for an MRI. We're in the waiting room, and it goes from one hour to two hours, I think maybe close to three hours, and we saw doctors going in and out. And then, and then we saw the anesthesiologist leave, and um, he wouldn't look at us. And they brought us into a back room, and they told us to have a seat at a, you know, a table, and, um, and they put a box of Kleenex on the table and said, someone will be in to talk to you in a minute, and then they left and closed the door, and then they came in and told us. They told us she had a tumor uh, growing in her abdomen and on her spine. The Scots would take Alex to Boston and New York for second opinions. No one could agree on how to treat Alex. What Jay and Liz knew was that their baby girl had cancer, neuroblastoma, and doctors said even if she survived, she'd probably never walk. Daddy wants you to stand up. Go ahead and do it. But that strong-willed little girl proved her doctors wrong. That's a girl. Now you're putting me on it. And she did. Alex stood up and learned to walk again. She was a warrior, relentless, pushing through rehab even though she couldn't feel her legs. This was a glimpse into the future. Alex would defy all odds with her cancer battle, with her life, and with her legacy. 
Alex went through cancer treatments for two years. It was then that all three doctors finally agreed on a course of treatment. It wasn't what we wanted to hear, and it was stop treating her. She's dying. You take her home and let her spend her few remaining days out of the hospital, not getting treated. But when the Scots thought all hope was lost, a glimmer of hope. A doctor in Philadelphia who might be able to help Alex. So they traveled to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia for an experimental treatment. Alex was three years old and very sick. She was on morphine 24 hours a day. The cancer was as high as her neck and as low as her left foot in the bones. And they injected her with a radioactive liquid that would go through her blood and somehow it would attach to the neuroblastoma and radiate it from the inside out. So you can imagine that's scary for a three-year-old. It's scary for parents, sure, sure. right? She got out of the hospital in three days. She said two things. She said the treatment worked. And when Liz asked her, what did she mean? She said, I could tell by the way I feel. She was completely off of pain medicine. No morphine, no Tylenol, nothing. And then she said she wanted to go shopping for a Christmas dress. It was everything we hoped for in making the trip to Philadelphia because at that point, nothing had really worked. We were terrified that we were gonna lose Alex. But for her to say that treatment worked and I wanted to go, sh I want to go shopping was just so hopeful. Walk over to me, but take your time. Doctors confirmed what Alex felt. We went back to Connecticut and they did an MRI and the doctor basically said that treatment worked. He said, what do you mean? They said, all of the cancer is gone except for one small spot on her spine. It's gone in her neck, it's gone in her foot. More hope. Their little girl's cancer was all but gone. And out of that hope, a dream. Alex wanted to give other kids hope too. After the treatment in Philly, I think it really planted the idea in her mind that there was more to be done. At first, her parents were confused. But she kept asking us about setting up the lemonade stand when she got out of the hospital, like once a month, then once a week, and eventually it seemed like it was every day. And I said, what is the deal with this stand? What do you want to buy so badly? And she said, I'm not keeping the money, I'm giving it to my doctor so they can help kids the way they helped me. I was proud of her, but honestly, I thought it was cute. I thought it was really cute that Alex would think she could make a difference for kids with cancer with a lemonade stand. I've been wanting to raise money for them for a while. Just that because, was my idea. Right, because they do so much, but it was her idea, so she beat me to it. Her first stand, I told her, would raise five or ten dollars, and she raised two thousand dollars. She said that was the best thing that ever happened to me. So I knew it wasn't, it wasn't cute. This meant something, and she was serious about it. I raise money. For what? Cancer research. And why is that important to you? Because it's helping people. And that was the start of something amazing. Alex was getting treatments that were beating back the cancer. Her family moved to Philadelphia to continue those treatments. A second lemonade stand on a chilly fall day, forcing Alex to wear a hat, and mittens brought in $800. I thought $800 was pretty good. But she didn't. No, she wasn't happy. So when the weather started getting warm the next year, she said, it's getting warm, I need to set up my lemonade stand again. Alex's drive was intense. She wanted to dedicate her third stand to her friend, Teresa, who had just lost her own battle with cancer. And that drew the attention of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Two little girls with cancer, one raising money in memory of the other with a lemonade stand. The article had a photo of Alex and her address. Mail started pouring in. The letters would say things like, Alex, we heard what you were doing. We set up our own fundraiser. Here's the money. So she would come home from school or the hospital in the afternoon and, and check the mail, and there would always be letters for her. And um, that's when it really took off. By the time Alex opened her stand, she had already raised $2,000, 12000 total in one day. And Alex would top that the following year, raising $18,000 as the rain poured down on her and the traffic that wrapped through the Scotts neighborhood. That rain, a metaphor for the impending storm ahead. Alex's cancer was spreading and treatments weren't working. But that didn't stop Alex. Her story was picked up by local and national news. Let's pretend that I could give you one wish in the whole world. What would the wish be? To get better. And then she got the call from Oprah. 
weak and weary, Alex wouldn't let anything stop her from taking her cause to network television. So Alex, what's the most expensive cup of lemonade you've ever sold? Um, five, $500. So they asked us to give you this check. The check is for $25,000. You make us proud. Thank you. Thank you too. Alex soon proclaimed she wanted to raise a million dollars for childhood cancer research. If enough people help with donations and buy go to um, aid stands, then I think we could do it. But her time was short. It's indescribable um, to know that your child He's not going to make it. And every family is different, and, and Alex was not one to talk about things. She made that pretty clear that she didn't want to talk about it. But Alex did send her mother a message. She was um, sort of moving her hands, and I said, what's the matter? You know, what are you trying to do? She said, I'm trying to catch those butterflies. And I thought that was pretty amazing to be thinking of butterflies at that point. And then a little while later, she, she asked if I could help her. And I said, of course, you know, what, what do you need? What do you need? And she said, I, I want to get over that wall so I can run. And this was a girl who could never run because her cancer had taken that ability away from her. Alex lost her battle with cancer on August 1st, 2004. Just before she died, her dream came true. She raised a million dollars for childhood cancer research and her legacy was born. 800 projects, millions in grant money, and real results. Zach had no options left. His parents prepared to say goodbye. But there was still hope. Zach got into a clinical trial funded by Alex's and is several years into remission. His mom reached out to Liz. And in her email, she reached out to say, I just want to say thank you. And someday I hope to give you a hug. And I met her and her son at the telethon for the first time and she gave me a hug and we both just cried. And in that moment, I felt like Alex's life made a lot more sense to me. Stephanie was the first to try another experimental treatment funded by Alex's. Her Lyme-sized brain tumor shrunk and doctors believe it's no longer a threat. That's what the donations do. That's what research does. It's not just in a lab somewhere that's not affecting lives. It's literally saving the lives of kids. And that's all that Alex Scott wanted, to save children from the disease that she battled for seven and a half years of her short life. To help children catch butterflies and run free. To help kids and families have hope. I do think that she had something special to give the world. And I'm grateful to her that she did that.